Okay, welcome, shalom everybody. You know, I, we, there's a, we're, we're gonna speak for a few minutes about, uh, about Elul, and then we're going to, we're gonna tell a, a quite a long story from the Baal Shem Tov, and then we're gonna learn three pieces from the Baal Shem Tov. Uh, we're gonna try to cover all of that God willing, in the 59 minutes, 58 minutes that we have, 56 minutes. First of all, I disappointed you. I let you down. Each of you, Dar and Karen and Sonny and Chaya, Reba and Levi, I let you down because last week we didn't speak about Shab this last Shabbos. This last Shabbos was Shabbos for Vorch and Chodesh Elul. And we're going to start from Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, why do we call it Rosh Hashanah? We've said it so many times, just like the head controls the body, the head of the year controls the year, how we're going to behave on the two days of Rosh Hashanah, uh, uh, approximately five weeks from now, uh, uh, a Monday and a Tuesday, is how the entire coming year is going to be. What controls Rosh Hashanah? The month of Elul. The month of Elul, we're going to talk about it next week. The king is in the field. The whole year, the king is in the palace. For one month a year, the king goes out to see his subjects. Whoever takes the trouble to go to see the king, even in their work clothes. What do those words mean? He, they go out to see the king. They, they, they go out of their normal day-to-day -day behavior to see the king, to experience the king, to be with the king. Uh, uh, whoever tries to do that, uh, uh, the, 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 and even in their work clothes, what does that mean? They, they haven't finished uh, all of their work. They still have... Their, their, their levushim, what are the garments of a person? Their thought, their speech, and their action. I'm talking to myself now, even more than I'm talking to any of you. What are the garments of the soul? The soul, garments of the soul are the thought and the speech and the action of the soul. So we can even, the king doesn't expect us when he comes out into the fields, when he comes out into the villages, when he comes out, he doesn't expect us to be in our Shabbos best. He doesn't expect us should just have finished all of our all of Coming our uh, what he doesn't expect us to, to finish all of our all all of our of, of our of our perfecting of ourselves he, he, but he does expect us to come out and see him so a person even before they've 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 been metakin they 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 repaired the lackings in their thought process, the lackings in their speech practices, in their thought process could be their mind wandering when they're praying. Then their thought speech could be a person who gets angry or speaks less than her. In, in their actions, it could be the person doesn't do the mitzvah that he does in the best possible way. That's called tikkun hamidus, fixing the different aspects of a person's, of tikkun alavushim, the, the different aspects of our garments. But during Elul, you're allowed to go to see the king even with dirty garments, even with work clothes, that we're a work in progress, okay? And, but whoever takes the effort to see the king, to go out to see the king, the king is, it will see, seize them. And when that person comes to, to, to visit with the king uh, during the high holidays, during the days of judgment, he knocks on the door and the king will open up wide and say, oh, you came to see me when I was in the fields. Now, the days of judgment, you are welcome into my palace. Okay? That's the first thing. Okay. There's another, the Shloh HaKodesh. The, the, this is the last thing I'm going to say about it. We'll speak about the next class, next Sunday night, Bezat Hashem, is uh, uh, the, uh, Sunday, is the second day of Rosh Chodesh. Shabbos is the 30th day of the month of Av, and Sunday is the first day of the month of Elul. Okay, and we're going to speak about the, the, the more about Elul then. I just want to say one more thing, because I want, I don't want anybody to lose uh, any, any part of the merit of Elul. The Shloa Kodesh, who was the first uh, uh, chief Ashkenazi rabbi of Yushalayim, and was the chief rabbi of Prague, and he wrote perhaps uh, a, 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 one of the greatest, the most accepted books of that merges together halacha and Kabbalah called the Shnei Luchot Abrit. It even exists in English. You can do a Google. You can get a, a part of the book Shnei Luchot Abrit in English. And the, again, the author's name was, a, he, they call him the Shlo. It's an acronym for those three words, Shnei Luchot Abrit. But his name was Isaiah Horowitz, Rabbi Isaiah Horowitz. Okay. So he writes there, he, he, the book is divided into sections. 
There's a section on the portions of the week. There's a section on the holidays. There's a section on, on the spiritual uh, 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 potency of the Jewish people. In the section on the holidays, he begins the section of the high holidays by saying that there's a, pasuk, there's a verse in the prophets that says, when the lion roars, who's not afraid? All right, in Hebrew, the words are, when the lion roars, who's not afraid? And he says that the, the word arie is an acronym. Okay, and the, the acronym is the Aleph, if you can picture it. Aleph of arie, arie means lion. The lion roars, who's not afraid? What is the lion spiritually? The lions spiritually are the high holidays. Okay. And so a person is supposed to be in awe of God during the high holidays. And so what is the word lion? How does it connect to the high holidays? The letter Aleph, the first word of the word Arie, stands for the month of Elul, Elul, what we're coming up to. That's beginning on Shabbat. The, the second letter, Reish, stands for new guess. Guess, what do you, Ron, if the Aleph stands for Elul, what does the Reish stand for? For Rosh Hashanah. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say Rosh. That's yeah. right. Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. And if the uh, Aleph and Reish stands for Elul and Reish, Rosh Hashanah, then what does the what does the Yud stand for? All right, it's a klatskasha. Nuchaya, what does the Yud stand for? Karen, Dara, if the Reish is Rosh Hashanah, what's the Yud? Yom Kippur, don't everybody shout once. Arye, Aleph, Reish, Yud, and Hey. Aleph is for El. Reish is for Rosh Hashanah. Yud is for Yom Kippur. <coughs> Excuse me. I, and what is the the hay? Right, so the hay is the most. It's really the most interesting part of the whole of the whole thing. Levi, we can only see your forehead. Levi, what is the what is the hay? The hay is Hosanna Rabba. Not Simchas Torah. The last day of Sukkot is Hosanna Rabba. Simchat Torah, right, or Simchat Torah Shmini Yetzeres out of Israel is already a different holiday and it's connected to the coming year. There's no longer an ability to, 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 to uh, it's no longer part of the days of judgment. Okay, the days of judgment are Elo, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and through Sukkot until Rosh Hashanah Rabbah. Okay, and that's what the person's Pesach says, when the lion roars, when a person feels, understands the power of this, uh, these seven weeks, seven weeks, right? And he, because of it, he's in awe of God. That's what it means when the lion roars, who's not afraid, right? And that being in awe of Hashem is the main uh, 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 commodity that we're supposed to use during these days. Okay, so so I, 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 we spent a few minutes not talking about it because it's, uh, uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm not going to speak to anybody uh, before Shabbos. So I want to say the Shabbos and Sunday, you should use every minute to the max, Bezat Hashem, and to begin the process of drawing down all of the positive energy for a good and sweet coming in the year. Okay, that's number one. Any questions? We set the welcome. Any questions? Levi, no questions? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just putting my headphones on. Sorry. No problem. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to tell, I, I tell you, I, 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 we are the three pieces that we're going to study are very very interesting, uh, uh, but and we're gonna but I'm gonna start with uh, with a story. I haven't been saying so many stories lately, and I'm gonna it's a, it's a long story, but I'm gonna try to say it to, as quickly as possible. But it's perhaps one of the most famous stories, and it's a story that the Rabbi Rebbe's told in Fabrengen, and that the, the actually the the Rebbe the Rebbe Rayas, the previous Rabbi Rebbe. It said the seven things that you can learn from the story. So we're going to do it now. So there was there was a couple, and the husband was Rav Yaakov, and Rav Yaakov was a, a, a tzaddik nister, 
In other words, there, there was such a thing as Tzaddik Nistorim. Uh, who were these tzad, tzad, who were these tzaddikim nistorim, these hidden tzaddikim? They were they were students of students of students of the Arizal. Okay, and uh, uh, they took on themselves uh, 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 in the in the these dark ages uh, to 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 be an inspiration for Jewish people, and they didn't want to take credit for themselves, uh, and so they hid their identities. And they acted and dressed and spoke like simple people, but they were actually tzaddikim nistarim. Hidden tzaddikim. So, so, but they, but this couple wasn't blessed with children, and the wife, uh, we don't know her name. She went to the, uh, she went to the uh, Baal Shem Tov and uh, crying, she begged him to uh, uh, to give her a blessing uh, uh, to have a child. Okay, and she and he, uh, he, he he she she pushed she 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 was so. Uh, 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 it was clear that it was so important to her that even though uh, he had said to her before that uh, he would hadn't agreed before, he agreed this time to, that she should have a child. Okay, she came back and she told her husband and they were so excited. Oh, welcome, Dax, and welcome, Mama, iPhone, whoever that is. <laughs> anyway, we're in the middle of a story. The story is a woman, and she begged the Baal Shem Tov to, 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 to bless her with a child. And the Baal Shem Tov finally agreed. Okay, and, and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, she went home, she told her husband, and they were so excited, and a year later they had a child, right? And the child was the, was the apple of their eye, and at the age of two, they brought him to the Baal Shem Tov and asked him to, to, to bless him, and the Baal Shem Tov took him in his lap and kissed him and handed him back to the parents and told them to go home. They went home and as soon as they got home at two years old, but the, exactly the second birthday, the child passed away and the parents were devastated. You can imagine you would be devastated, okay? They had waited so many years, they weren't young people anymore and, they, and, they, and, and the child that they had passed away and they, and they came to the Rebbe, right? And, they, and, they, and they, they obviously they felt that they hadn't been proper parents, right? And that this was something they had done, right? uh, even if uh, Rabbi Yaakov was a tzaddik, uh, there's something they had done uh, it caused them to not to merit to have this child. And the Baal Shem Tov said, let me tell you a story. And this is a very famous thing, but there are some details here that, uh, that, that I learned for the first time today when I, was, when I reviewed the story. One second, let me just check something. Right. That, uh, let me tell you a story. The story was of a king. A king, you know, you're talking about in Europe, there were all these uh, city-states. It could be a... Uh, 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 small geographic area with a lot of people, okay, or a large geographic area, okay, but there was a city-state with a king, with a person who was the absolute ruler, right, and, and he had everything, but he didn't have children, and so he, 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 he asked his advisors, what do I do, how do I, how can I have a child, and the advisors said, there's no one in the world that can help you except for the Jews, we suggest that you decree that if the Jews, if, if, if you don't have a child within a year, that the Jewish people will be banished from your land, Okay, when, and they'll lose all their possessions and they'll, 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 they'll death and destruction for the Jewish people. So he made the decree and the Jewish people prayed and they fasted. It's not a joke, right? They, 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 if they didn't bring the king a child, then, then that they were going to be uh, uh, death and destruction, havoc, exile. And so they prayed and they fasted, right? And they, and they, and they, and they, and they beseeched God for the sake of the Jewish community, he should give the king a child. And a year later, the king had a child. And of course, he was so thankful. He immediately uh, uh, stopped the decree, right? And they, and, 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 and they had the child, okay? And the child, uh, 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 as soon as he was able to begin to, to, to learn, uh, uh, even for two, two years old, the, the, uh, they brought the best professors, the best teachers, right? And the child grew, right? And he showed incredible, uh, 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 he was a prodigy. Okay, he was way beyond this teacher, the next year, the third teacher, and he came to his father and he said, "We can't, I can't, uh, I, 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 it, it's, it's all very nice, but I need more." Okay, so we're talking. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm guessing that, that he was a boy, uh, maybe eight, nine, ten years old, and so who was the most uh, educated person? Was the was the was the uh, was the was the po the, 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 the Afia four, right? That's in Hebrew that translated as the Pope, right? But but uh, I, 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 
and that's that's how the story says it. But it could have been just the highest uh, 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 Catholic official, right? Uh, 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 that that was at that time in that area, okay? And uh, and he agreed uh, to uh, to take on the teaching of this child, but with one condition. The condition was uh, first of all, the child would have to come to him, right? And and uh, would go home uh, periodically. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, he had to have two hours a day where he was, even the prince couldn't uh, interrupt him. Where that was his special time for going up to heaven. Okay, and the, and the king agreed and the boy agreed. But over the months that followed and the, and the boy was, was connected with his teacher and his teacher was his dream and they studied all of the philosophies and they studied all the languages and they studied all of the sciences and, and the child became so, his, as his genius flourished, he became more and more connected to his teacher and it was made him it it it, it made him a, a, a crazy that he didn't know what the teacher did for those two hours a day it became an obsession by him and it took so much time but he 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 he, he manipulated and pushed and pulled and uh, uh, uh and he was finally able to get the keys to the room uh, where the teacher uh, uh, sat and he would go and, and one day he went to the room and he hid uh, before the teacher came in and the teacher came in and he saw they put on the talisman's film Okay, and the boy came out and says, well, well, what is this? What are you doing? Okay, and the teacher was, 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 was the, the Pope, was, right, was, was shocked and not just shocked, he was scared because the, he had kept it hidden that he was a, that he was a, 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 a hidden Jew, okay? And that, uh, uh, and that uh, he, 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 he was worried if, it, if, the, if the young man, the boy would, would tell the others and his father especially, uh, it could, he could lose his life. Okay, and certainly uh, not be allowed to, to follow his, his religion anymore. But the story is that the, the boy had a, a already begun to understand that there was a particular religion called the Jewish people, and he had been very interested in it. And he said, don't worry, it, it, I, I, I'm, this, is, this is actually was part of, of, of was something, it's, it's divine providence that I, I wanted to become a Jewish person. And now all I need you to help me with is to that I should be Magaya, that I should to, uh, uh, be convert to a Jewish person. Okay, so from that time they they prepared together, right? The, the boy would go home uh, uh, on a periodic basis. He didn't tell his father anything. They were preparing him for his gear, right? And uh, one of the trips on his way from the from the from the Afia Four to his home, he disappeared. Okay, and he put on uh, 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 peasant's clothes. Okay, and he, he, he hid himself and he went to a certain town and in that town he, he converted and he lived out the rest of his life. Uh, uh, oh, I forgot, I left that. The whole reason I'm telling this story, I left out that when the, when the decree happened of the king, only one soul uh, stood forward, right? To say that it, would, uh, it was willing to come down uh, uh, into this not Jewish, family to save the Jewish people. Only one soul. Hi. Okay. And that soul was given permission to come down. Okay. And so then when the boy, then the boy at, at the age of 13, he, 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 he not only had his bar mitzvah, he converted to Judaism and he lived a, a life of, of poverty, of, of hiddenness, because his father wouldn't stop searching for him. Okay, he knew that if he would, uh, 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 if he would excel, if he would become a prominent person, and his genius certainly would allow that, and his father would find him, and he would have to give up his his Judaism. Okay, and uh, 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 and when that soul, when that person passed away, okay, he got to the heavenly court, and what? So what happens in the heavenly court? In the heavenly court, what happens is is that all of the positive things you did. Uh, uh, there are angels that you create and all the negative things that a person does they create angels right and the 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 the, the positive angels are clamoring for the for the, for the person to go to heaven and that and the, the angels that are created from the negative deeds are clamoring that the person should be punished here's the soul that 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 was self-sacrifice it sacrificed its life to be born to a not jewish parents to come to save the jewish people and had all the trouble and he lived a life of poverty what 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 uh, uh, angel could speak against him? But still, one one angel stood up and said and said, "Okay, he he. This is an an an, an, an 
incredible, unfathomable, unfathomable life that this person led in. And, but there's still a problem. How can he be to the highest levels of Gan Eden when the first uh, two years of his life, he was suckled by a not Jewish woman? Okay, he, how can he be with all of the other, of the other great tzaddikim? Okay, and, uh, uh, and, the, the, and the heavenly court agreed, right? That he would have to come down uh, uh, and be, live with a Jewish family and be born to a Jewish mother and Jewish family. Okay, and so the Balsento said to this couple that it was decreed from heaven that you shouldn't have children. Okay, but, uh, 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 but, since, uh, uh, but since I knew how much you wanted to have children, uh, 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 and this soul, heavenly accord, heavenly accord had agreed that this soul should come into the world. Okay, then, then, then I decided to, to pray that, that the child should be born to you. Okay, so now that they were even more shocked, the couple, right? They, they thought really that they had done something wrong. Now they felt bad because they perhaps they hadn't treated this holy soul that they were given custody of it for just for two years that they hadn't treated it properly, and 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 they they they, they and the Balshemtol said no no that they 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 it said in heaven that they wanted it to go to a a kosher to a proper family right in other words from heaven the heavenly court they had decided that you you were going to be good parents for this child and they, they, that's not the nothing but but still. Uh, 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 your your the sadness that you experience uh, uh, the 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 tragedy of losing this one child. Uh, 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 so this is what you should do. Right? They asked them. They, they, so they so so they, so they say what will they, they said what should we do? This is you should, Rabbi Yaakov. You should go to be the sextant in the shul. You should go to the shul. He lives in Pinsk, right? And you should be the sextant in the shul, which means like the 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 the, the caretaker of the synagogue, and it's your job. That you should um, gather all the children together, right? The children that cannot yet read, and you should have them say Amen to the blessings. And you should say, give out candies. They should say, they should say some blessings. And they, they should, it, it, and when they're in the, during the service, in the Jewish prayer service, right? There's, there are all these communal things. There's, there's saying Amen. They're saying Amen to, to the Kaddish prayer. They're saying Borchu, which is the call to prayer in, in the middle of the service. There's Kadusha, which is uh, uh, what we say, holy, holy, holy. Kadush, 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 Hashem, Tzvakos, Lamokalos, Kavaydev. Holy, holy, the God of, of hosts. The, the whole world is full of His glory. There's all of these communal uh, things. And he should train the children to say all, all, of, all of these things. And especially that when they take the Torah out of the, the, um, the, the Aaron Kodesh, the Ark, he should lift the children up. They should kiss the Sefer Torah, okay? And when they take it out of the Ark and when they bring it back to the Ark. That was the mission that the Baal Shem Tov told him. Okay, and, the, and for the wife, the, he said, you have to become a Mialedit, a, 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 a doula, a doula, a woman that helps women give birth. And specifically, you should work with women that can't, they, they're, they're poor women, right? That, that, they, that, they, that they can't uh, uh, afford to have help. That they would be alone when they would give birth. But you have to work with these women, right? And you have to tell them that the, when it's a boy, uh, uh, every Jewish child is holy, okay? But when it's a boy, uh, that he they have to um, uh, uh, say Kriya Shema, read the Shema to it every day until the bris, and 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 bring in other children and give them candies that they should uh, say blessings, say the blessing on the candy uh, in fr in front of the children, in front of the the baby. And after the circumcision, after the Brit Milah, uh, to be careful that the child wears a kippah, even when he's sleeping, okay? The kippah is a very holy thing, right? It connects a person to, it's something we put on our heads to connect us to Hashem. Excuse me. And the, uh, uh, not in the kippah, and they, they should, from the day of the bris, the, the baby has to wash negavasa, which is when the baby wakes up, they have to wash alternately. And this is not to, this is for everybody, even girls, but especially a boy from the day of the bris, okay, uh, washing alternately three times, one and one, 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 but one on one hand, one on the second hand, two, two, three, three, six times alternately, three times alternately on each hand. Those are the instructions that Hashem gave them, right? And that they, they went back to Pinsk and they, they did exactly like the Hashem said. Again, remember, the Hashem was the tzaddik of the generation. He was the righteous person of the generation. But Rav Yaakov was also one of the hidden tzaddikim. His job was to spread Judaism. But he, he was in awe of the Hashem And he went out and they followed what the Hashem said to the, to, the, to the letter of the, of the law. 
right? And even though from heaven it had been decreed that they weren't going to have children, after a year, they gave birth to a son. And that son became one of the greatest tzaddikim in Hasidic tradition, Rabbi Aaron of Karlin. The Aaron of Karlin. Okay. Okay. That's the story. Now, I, I want to say, is it, any questions? Yeah, I, I, I have one one Wait, question. Just, just, where you just said... one sec. It's just one sec. I just want to. I just wish the, 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 I just want to say I'm free. I have a question, right? But but we're, we're gonna. It's so. This is. I chose this story because it's so interesting. Uh, what we're going to the pieces. What time is it? The pieces that we're going to learn today. But I just want to. I there was so many things. I just want to read to you what the what the the Rebbe Rayats uh, said that you learn from the story. One second. He had a, there's a list. Okay, one second. Okay, the, the first thing is the, 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 the Rayat, the Rayat said, and I, I'm, I'm speaking to everybody, I'm speaking to myself. You know, I, this is, I want, I'm going to interrupt myself, but this is, it, it, give me, Ron, give me a second. This is a holiday time. It's called Ben Ismanim. I think I mentioned it last week. Asfat is packed, Yushalayim is packed. Right, Tveri is packed. All the holy cities packed with religious people. They have only three weeks a year where they, where they, it's a tradition to go away. There are other holidays, like people don't generally work for much of the high holidays. People don't generally work for for the month of Nisan. They don't go. To, there's no koilu, koilu. There's no yeshiva for married men during the month of Nisan when Pesach is during the high holidays. But there's only one traditional holiday, traditional time, three weeks from Tisha B'av until the beginning of the month of El. That religious people travel, uh, 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 travel, right? And so there's hundreds, if not thousands, of families in Tzfat. Every single room is taken. The census packed every single night, right? And the people take their children away to to, to 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 and they go to all the holy sites and they go hiking and they, uh, it, it's 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 you know. So on my way home, I was walking home exactly at Mincha time. I'm not exaggerating. Read my lips. I was stopped eleven times by by, by eleven times. I was stopped. By, uh, by visitors to Tzfat who saw, uh, uh, obviously, a local person, because I was going, <laughs> I knew where I was going, asking me where I can find a minion for Mincha, where I can find a prayer, a, 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 an afternoon prayer group. And I'm telling you the truth. I don't usually pray Mincha with a minion. In the chakras, I pray with a minion. Okay, but Mincha, it's, it's, it's dinner time at home, and I try to come home for dinner. Okay, and, 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 and I'm telling you, 11 people asked me where they could find a place to pray. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I'm not, what's the matter with me? And then I read this story. So the first thing the Baal Shem, that, the, that the Rebbe Ayat says, he says, he says that we all underestimate the merit of saying Amen. And Amen Yeheshme Rabbah, answering to Kaddish, Borchun Kedusha, right? Whether or for ourselves, and especially with, with little, you know, being an example for our own children or for other people's children. Okay, that it's, it's a kiss in the Sefer Torah. Again, it, tw three times a week, they take the Torah out of the scroll four times a week. It's Mondays and Thursdays and on Shabbat in the morning, Shabbat in the afternoon. Six, four times they take the Torah out, put it back. Eight opportunities to kiss the Sefer Torah. Which of us is running to do it? Or you know, there's mostly women here. Sending our husbands to do it. Say, well, you should all marry the right person at the right time. What is it? How can we? So that's a, here's what he says. What are the seven things you learn from the story? The first thing we, we learn from, so besides that, about, about the, 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 the not losing the opportunity to serve Hashem in ways that, that don't seem to, won't bring us any big feedback. It's not like studying Torah where you get this high or putting on tefillin, okay, or, 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 or lighting Shabbos candles or making Kiddush. This is simple stuff. Saying, Amen, Yehei, Shmei, Rabba, with intention. Amen to other people's blessings. Boruchu, Kedusha. Okay, okay, so that's number one. The, 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 the second thing he says is, is, is the self-sacrifice of the Baal Shemta because it's a well-known thing in the books of Kabbalah uh, of of uh, uh, that there are certain people in every generation that know the secrets that they have a window into heaven and they know what's going on okay and uh, 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 and a person that is a special chamber in heaven 
for tzaddikim, I'm talking about righteous people that even though they're in heaven, is a chamber where they're punished. First of all, being punished in heaven is what an embarrassment for giving away the secrets of heaven in the world. And here the Baal Shem Tov it, 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 it told them this whole story and who the child that they had and who it was. And he revealed to them that it was from heaven. They weren't, weren't supposed to be allowed to have children. And he told them the secret how to have children. And he, what Messiris Nefesh, what self-sacrifice that, that, that the Baal Shem Tov had. So that's the first thing he brings. Right. Uh, uh, and for what purpose? Because he wanted to, to, to be compassionate, uh, uh, to console uh, uh, this family, all right, and to explain to them why they didn't have a children. That's number one. Okay, number two, that the, the, the again, uh, we, I'm going to bring this point out much more later, but listen to the words. That the what's the main way to serve Hashem? Which of us, who of us don't need God's help? We all need God's help. What's the main way to serve God? It says to bring down the order, to arouse Rachamei Shemayim, divine, uh, divine mercy is through Pasha doing it. No sighs, no, 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 no resolutions, no, just doing it, getting off your chair and doing something. Okay, that's number two, right? A, 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 a couple that themselves needs, and again, a couple or a single person who needs Rachmei Shemayim, who needs divine mercy, right? Oh, you know, he's saying something else. A couple, I don't know how many of, the, of you are married, who are, whoever is married should appreciate their spouse. Whoever is not married should find the right person soon, okay? Uh, 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 even though the couple, they're one thing, right? They're, they're, they're a unit, Right, that they they shushneim inyan echad. They're one. They're one thing. They're okay. Nevertheless, when it comes to bringing down heavenly, heavenly mercy, they both have to work. You hear that? One person can't carry the weight. Both people have to make the effort. Okay. And the, he says again this idea of the great merit of saying amen and amen yesh merab and baruch and kedusha and to help children to say blessings. Okay. The sixth thing is the chashivas of Minagi Yisrael. Oh, the importance of, don't underestimate the importance of kissing the Sefer Torah. Like I, I, I know in, 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 in a sense, in many shuls, they bring the Sefer Torah into the women's section on the high holidays, take the opportunity, literally commune with God when you do it, okay? Uh, and, and the final thing, oh, the, the, the final thing that he said is that the importance we, yeah, you should, everybody should be blessed to have children, please God, and the, the incredible merit of, of educating our children to be connected to, to God and to the Torah, right, and how that education begins from the very time that they're born. Those are the seven things we learned from the story. Okay, now, Ramaz gets a question, and then, and then, and, and then we're going to learn the three pieces, and, you, and I'll, you'll see the connection between what we're going to study and the story. Yeah, Ron, what were you going to ask? Well, you, you made the point that these, this couple came to the Baal Shem Tov and the Baal Shem Tov blessed them that they could have a child. I mean, how can a human being be the conduit for uh, that be, only because of the Baal Shem Tov that had a child? That has to be, uh, if, if they were decreed not to have a child, I don't, it seems very, um, I don't know, it just I, doesn't feel I, I right. That, right. Okay, I hear you. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, um, uh, uh, um, the, the story did explain that. The story said that that uh, the, from heaven they agreed that this soul that agreed to be born into a not Jewish family, okay. Uh, 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 in other words, it wasn't a normal situation. It was an a completely abnormal situation, okay. That that uh, that this soul should come into a into an abnormal family, right? And 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 that after it got to heaven. The heavenly court agreed that that it had it had it wasn't a square deal. It wasn't a square deal at all. He did more, much more than it was it would have been expected under anyone. The, and then and even so, he was denied from being on to the highest level of the spiritual heights. And so this was an exception. This was an exception, right? That that even though this family it was decreed they couldn't have children, that child they were allowed to have because of the special circumstances. Okay. Right. And 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 uh, I hope that was clear. It, it, it was not that he 
given by Sinai. It was because this was a special situation uh, 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 where heaven had said that this situation was just, it wasn't giving them a child. It was giving them a tragedy. He only was with them for two years and then he died. That's not called having a child. I, I'm not sure what you think. Okay. But later when they had a child of their own and he, that was because of, of a demonstrated a level of self-sacrifice of blaming themselves instead of God of 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 of, of a, 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 a literally harnessing themselves what the Baal Tov said in a, almost a supernatural way giving up their lives for her to be a a a a a a, 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 a doula whatever they help women give birth and for him to be the shamish to do simple things he was a a Torah genius. He was a big tzaddik, and yet he, he he would lift up children to kiss the Torah every single day of the week. Okay, he would gave his life away for educating other children. Okay, so that that transformed it. I hope I answered your question. I, I it's a very important question. I, I hope I answered it properly. Did you do it? Was I clear? Uh, yeah, they did things that no. the Boshim guided them to do. Before so that, that, before right. that, that's right. How did they have the first child? They, because because this was a a, a a a a a because from heaven it was decreed that this child had to come into the world for just for two years to repair that this he even though he converted and all the whole long story right he saved the Jewish people from disaster Ron right by coming <laughs> born into a not Jewish family wow it's so right Jewish people have a mission he he was born into a not Jewish family. nobody knew if he was going to be able to. To, to transform his life the way that he did. It was a, it was a doubt. Who uses their strength 100%? Which one of us? I, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to just talk. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to make a point. He, he, the Bashantov was able to divert that child to this family specifically because uh, they weren't uh, blessed to have children. This was an abnormal situation. But when they had their second child, that was because of their own merit. Not because of the Balshem of manipulating the heavens. Okay, just, I hope I said that clearly. I hope. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, Rabbi, yeah. can I just make a comment, please? Absolutely. You're, you're in. You're actually in my screen. You're sitting in Moshe's place. He would always. Yeah, I can see, I can see right? that. I'm, I'm, it's an honor, Rabbi. Uh, I wanted to thank. I want to give a personal thank you for telling that story, because I heard it years and years ago, but now I know I only heard the first half of it. And thanks to you, I now know the whole story. And the part that was missing was the roles that were given to the father and the mother. That, that's brand new to me. The, right. Up to the death of the, the, the baby I had heard before. And now it's even more meaningful knowing that the, the, the parents each had a role. Right. I, I, I want to say to everybody that the story is usually only told half. And God protect us. It's, it's told to, to parents that like w who have a child that died, passes away with a crib death, or it's it's it's, it's explained that you know, it, it, that's how they explain it. Okay, and that's not even one of the things that the Rebbe Ariat says you learn from the story. Not that's not that's not even that's not the story as far as the Rebbe Ariat says. The Rebbe Ariat says it's talking about the story is focusing on the power of Amen Yeshme Rabba, the power of Jewish education, the self-sacrifice of the Balsemto, the sacrifice of the parents. That's, those are the things that we learn. Okay, thank you very, very much. Let's, let's go on. We're, 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 we're going to do any other, oh wait, any other questions? No, okay. We're, we're in a, a, a 142, just with my notebook. I, you know, I, I decided last week, last week, uh, uh, I wasn't happy with the class last week, and I said I'm going to give a, a summary of each of the ideas from the Baal Shem Tov before we study it. But, but the two things that we're learning today are very straightforward, so I'm not going to do that. But on the third, I'm going to give a summary before. Bezat Hashem. Here we are. It says, Inyan Lishma. What is this thing? We, 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 we spoke about it last week. Whoever was here last week, not everybody was here. Last week, we spoke about the, the, the how do you trick the evil inclination? Right, because the evil inclination will not rest until he takes away, uh, uh, until he makes sure that a person doesn't does some doesn't do a mitzvah simply for God's sake. If he sees that a person is literally gearing up to do the mitzvah for God's sake, he's going to redouble and triple his efforts. He's going to to uh, to uh, he's going to to mach the person 
that, 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 that they shouldn't do it for God's sake. They should have some personal pinya, right? Some personal uh, agenda there. And so the Balshanto suggests, what happens? What do you do when 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 there's a there's a personal agenda involved? What do you do? Okay, uh, what, uh, how do how do you get? Oh, no, I'm sorry. How do you get get rid of the evil inclination that's making you crazy to have some personal agenda? Okay, is you 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 let him do his thing, right? When you're starting to do a mitzvah. And you think, you know, oh, I'm going to go to Shabbos meal because the food's good. I'm going to, 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 to say the Torah because people are going to think I'm special. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to uh, put on tefillin because uh, it's going to, because the, the tefillin straps are pressure points on the front of the head and the back of the head, on the upper arm and the hand that, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, they arouse a person's spiritual feelings, right? So, I, so I, you know, I, it, 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 every, every mitzvah has an agenda. And that our tradition is that the, that the evil inclination only thinks about the present, not about the future. As soon as he sees that the person uh, 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 has some of himself mixed into the doing of the mitzvah, he goes away. And then a person can transform it and do it for God's sake. So that so that's, it follows this week. What does it say? What is the idea of the Shema? What is the, once we, 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 we learn the trick, we trick the evil inclination. We, 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 we let ourselves think for that we're doing the mitzvah for some personal agenda. And then as soon as we get into it, we push away the personal agenda. We do it for God's sake. Okay. Eh, 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 eh. So, so now he's asking that question, what does it mean, the shmor? Okay, the, the shmor means for God's sake. The word means the shmor, for its sake. When you do something for its sake, that's the holiest thing. When you do something not for its sake, right? If, if I bring a present for my wife and I'm not bringing it for the, for the because I want to show my wife love, because I want, <laughs> I want, I want, no, it's not a good analogy. You, you bring somebody a present, right? And you bring a present because you think you want them to show that you care about them. And really, it's because you want something from them. No, that's doing something with an agenda. What does it mean, lishmor, for its sake? I'm doing something for its sake. So the Bosham to ask, what does it mean, right, for its sake, right? It's lishmor, it's for the ois atzmai. When you're learning Torah, when you're reading words of Hebrew, and you're doing it for the sake of the letter, what does it mean for the sake of the letter? So, so it's un I think it's so a sort of powerful idea. What is the sake of the letter? Right? What's a letter? A letter is a garment for something, for God's will and wisdom. And there's two levels. There's the level of the divine light that, that, that's inside that letter, drawing from above to below. There's the idea of the letter is in exile and we want to send it back to its source in heaven, okay? W whether it's to reveal the divine light or to, to fix, to send the letter, which is God's will, back to its face, whatever it is. When you're doing, the shmo means you're doing it for the sake of, 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 the, of the letter itself, for the sake of the letter. In other words, a person doesn't have to go crazy. If, when, it, when I'm saying to you, if, if, if you, whenever you do something, I'm looking, you know, I only know a few of you well. I, there's some people that I can see here are do big mitzvahs, big mitzvahs. They're transforming the world. I can see, again, a, a few people, I don't, I'm not going to say any names. And we're privileged for them to be with us. Okay. When, and they're changing the world through their mitzvahs. What does it mean to do the mitzvah of the shmo? It says the shmo for the sake of it, right? For the sake of itself. To, for the, to, 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 when we do a mitzvah of tzedakah, or we do a mitzvah of tikkun oilam, of transforming the world, or we do a, 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 a mitzvah of transforming people's, of people's lives, whatever the mitzvah we're doing, right? we have to, the Balsam was saying, you have to do it for the sake of that thing that you have to realize that there's an inner dimension to every action, right? And that, that when I focus on that one thing, I'm, I'm revealing the light of that action in the world. And I'm also it, it, it taking the divine light that was in exile and I'm sending it back to its source, both things at once. I'm drawing, 
divine energy from on high into the world, and I'm sending the, the, the exiled energy from the world back into heaven. That's what it means to Shmuel, for the sake of that thing itself. Okay, that's the first thing. Okay, and 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 he's, and he, and he, he the, the, one of the commentaries says, right, that that's how a person should meditate when they do every commandment, especially uh, studying Torah or any other mitzvah, right, of that duality. I'm drawing energy down and I'm sending energy up to live in the moment of that commandment. But if God forbid a person doesn't have that clarity, oh my gosh, we have to go fast. He doesn't have that clarity. Okay, and he's doing something for the with a, with a different agenda, with it, with a, with his own agenda in it. So, what are the words? What are the words that he uses? Right in, in the Zohar says, the Zohar says when a person doesn't do it for the sake of heaven, he's drawing instead of redeeming the world and bringing in life and holiness. Right, when you do something for God's sake, it brings in light and holiness. When a person does something with an agenda, he's bringing into the world, and I'm, I, I, I say the words with, I say it with, 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 with awe. He says, he, when a person does something with an agenda, he's bringing into the world death and impurity. Okay, but that's the difference. Okay, that's the first thing. Can I move on? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. You know what? Maybe because we'll, I have two more pieces I wanted to. The second piece is very interesting. The second piece. Is to, yeah, I look at the translation. It's 143. It's very interesting. Who was the teacher of the Balshemtov? The teacher of the Balshemtov was a was a prophet named Achi. This is inside. He said, "Look inside." Achia Shaloni, the person, the, 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 he, his name was Achia. Okay, from has the word Chai in it, giving life, and he was from the town of Shiloh. Shiloh is is a town. It was one of the places where the where the tabernacle it, it moved until they built the temple in Jerusalem. Shiloh was one of the places. Okay, and so Achia was from the town of Shiloh. Who was this person, right? Who was this person that was the teacher of the Baal Shem Tov? So you're going to, now, you're all going to shout at me. I, I hope you would. It's such, it's such an incredible idea here. Okay, this is something that the Baal Shem Tov said. He said it. And we, all of us together, I want to look at this. We've studied Bosh 300 pages of the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, And we accepted each and everything. So now he's going to teach us something. And somebody's going to say, well, I don't, I don't accept it. What? You don't accept it? <laughs> That's the whole point. One second. Uh, okay. That's the whole point. Uh, uh, uh. Wait, what happened? What did I do? I got rid of it. No, no, no. Cancel. I don't know. I messed up my screen. Wait, one second. Ah, there it is. No, now where is everybody? Ah, okay, forget it. All right. Uh, 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 you're all saying you're gonna, you, you're not gonna accept it. And I'm telling you, just the way that we learned 360 pages of teaching the Bible and we accepted each thing. You have to, this you have to take. You have to, you have to see it from that way. Okay. So what does it say? Achia Shiloni, Achia from the town of Shiloni. Who was he? He was a person that lived 800 years. He, he received, he heard Moses teaching, right? And he was one of the people who left Egypt. So you can ask, well, then why did he die in the desert like all the other Jews? Because he was under 20. The decree to die in the desert were only people over 20. That means when he left Egypt, he was a child or whatever. He was under 20, maybe not a child. And he heard Moses teaching. One of the commentaries, he saw Aaron the priest, and after that he was he 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 grew in his spiritual stature eight hundred years. Believe her, and he was in the in the rabbinical court of King David. Okay, and and he and his prophecies are listed in the book called Malachi. I don't know how you say Malachi in English. Malachi, Malachi, Malachi. I don't know. Malachi is one of the prophets. He 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 was prophesied during the first temple period. And and what was his prophecies about? It was it was this was then when the Jewish people were split between uh, 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 between the tribe of Yehuda and all the other tribes, and he was prophesizing against it. He was going to bring the destruction of the Jewish people. Okay, and he and he preached for unity, for unity, and that unity would bring the redemption. Okay, anyway, and so so that's what he says. He was from the based in 
of King David. In other words, King David was a king, a powerful king. He conquered land after land. All the worlds wanted to, to bring him tribute. That's how great King David was, right? And he was from King David's rabbinical court. And who and 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 who was he? He was the the rabbo, the spiritual advisor of Elijah the prophet, and the spiritual advisor of our teachers of Hashem. Okay, and 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 the and and, and they want to say that oh, again, this this that he merited to be both the 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 spiritual advisor of the Elijah the prophet, because Elijah is the harbinger of Mashiach. Elijah never died. He went up to heaven in a flaming chariot. He, he, he's, 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 he's some level, he's still a human person, even though he became like an angel. And he has to be at every single bris just to speak good about the Jewish people. And he's going to be the one that Mashiach comes. He's going to announce the Mashiach is coming. Okay. And that's the same idea of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov's Torah was the Torah that's going to bring Mashiach. This is the Torah of the Messiah. So the more we study the Torah of the Mashiach, the more we're going to, 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 to bring the possibility of the Messiah coming, of, of the Baal Shem Tov, the more we're going to bring the, the, the possibility of the Mashiach coming into the world. Okay, that's, that's number two. I have six minutes left. We're, we're going to go for it, right? Hello? Nobody's leaving. <laughs> I can't see my own picture. What's going on here? I messed up the whole thing. All right. And if I can't see you, I apologize. Do, how do I close the chat box? Does anybody know? Let's close the chat box. One second. Oh, there it is. Good. Okay, here we go. Okay, is, any questions? About, again, we've, what is Lishma? For the sake of the thing itself. When you're studying Torah, you're doing it for the sake of the letter. When you say, Asre Yosha Vesecha, happy are those who sit in your house. When you're, you're saying it Lishma, you're saying it for the sake of the letter. You're, you totally are focused on the letter and the power of the letter and that you're revealing the divinity of the letter and you're taking the letter and by saying it in this world, you're sending it back out of exile. That's the first thing. The second thing was about Achia Shiloni, that the reason that the Baal Tov, the ability of the Baal Tov to, to bring the redemption was because he had a, the teacher, he was mamish, the connection between going out of Egypt, the beginning of the exile and the coming of the Mashiach, which is the end of the exile. Okay, and, and, and who was the person that connected it? Was Achia from the city of Shiloh? Okay, that's the second thing. Can we can we move on? Don't you're, I, okay, I I I I'm I'm being difficult. I know, but I want to do this thing. Okay, we have four minutes left. Here we go. Look in the English, please. It's very beautiful. It says Me'abal Shem Tov Moshe LeMelech. It's a it's an analogy of a king. So Shalach Ben Yechido from He sent his only son. To distant places, they should have afterwards more pleasure. What does it mean, more pleasure? That the words in the text are more pleasure. More pleasure or what? What that he he sent them far away, so she he should be able to enjoy steaks when he comes back to the palace. He should be able to enjoy ice cream sundays, you know, banana splits with four three, three scoops of ice cream. That's more pleasure. No, he's the father sent the son away so that the son should have more pleasure of being at the table of his father. That he should appreciate the, 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 the power of being the son of the king, okay? And, but what happened? It, the plan backfired. It says, and, and the child decided, over the time, the child, the prince, forgot about all of the pleasures of the king, of the palace of the king. Right? And he didn't want to come back. They sent him minister after minister, important people. And, and, and he just pushed them away. He said, I'm not interested in going back. Okay, all right. And all that the king said, more and more important people to, the, to his son, and nothing helped at all. Nothing. The, the, the young man was abstinent. Obstinate. Okay. Ad shahoya shom sar echad. There was there was one minister, and he was very wise. And so his clothing and his language he changed. Bidmuta ben hahu to be 
to be like he 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 to be like the like the prince. He dressed in the clothing of the prince. He spoke in the language of the prince of the faraway places. And he was able to come close to him by the Madrigas of Okay, one second. It says it says in one of the places that that he he was able to have the confidence of the child. The child thought he was also like himself that that had had the benefits of the palace and decided to 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 leave it all. Okay, I love you. his is Torah. Okay, so that's the word. That's the word. Okay, everybody think about the thing. Okay, right. In in a certain sense. Right. In a certain sense, that's a that's a story of the life of the Jewish people. Each of us is the prince. Each and every one of us is that prince that God sent away. Okay, and why did God send us away? Because we're becoming spoiled in the palace. Right. It's a, with the, the in, in Kabbalah, it says it's such an amazing thing. I said in Kathedra once before. It said, why did he have to send them away? He says, because pleasure that's that's a a, a timidi that's constant stops being pleasure. Uh, if 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 it's only if everything is just a pleasure, the being in the house of the king and the and all of the things, then 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 it stops being pleasurable. It becomes unpleasant. And so that's why the king sent his son away. That's why God sent us his children away into the world. Okay, into this world. Okay. And 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 God sent us messengers, and we don't want to come back, right? And then He finally, each of us finds that one minister that changes his clothing, that changes his language, is able to come close to us, okay? And then and 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 convince the child to return to his father. Now look at the last line. Hoshanto says, "This is why the Torah is not just a book of law." This is why the Torah is filled with stories of human people and the challenges that they face right? and, and how they over, overcame, you know, you know, you know, I tell you, if, if you look at the Torah, you know, that uh, uh, Adam and Eve start off by eating from the tree and then they had two, two sons and one killed the other, right? And, 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 and then we went into the, to, 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 the, to, to, to Abe, the son of Abraham, Yishmael and Yitzchak were also uh, 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 opposites. And then uh, uh, Yaakov and Esau were opposites. We're just talking about story after story of, of, of what's real life, okay? And, and, and of the spiritual mission behind it, okay? And so, so the Baal Shem Tov is saying that the Torah actually lowered itself like the minister who took off his 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 his, his uh, uh, royal garments, and he put on the garments of a simple person, and he stopped speaking the royal speech, and he spoke the speech of the simple people, just in order to bring the child back to the to the to the to the bosom of, of his father to the palace, and that that's why the Torah lowered itself, and to speak stories, right, that we should be able to understand how to apply Judaism in our lives. And that's, that's why I told that story about the Baal Tov, Because, because the, the, each detail of the story of the Baal Tov also teaches us something about how to, to maximize that, that the, 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 how to, how to uh, um, live, live Judaism, to live a spiritual life in a physical world, that's the power of a story. You know, and, and I'm going to close. Okay. Anyway, there's so much more to say. We're we're we're, we're pretty much on schedule. I want I want to say that the, I think I I told the story a few weeks ago. That had a very a very big impact on me. I'm going to tell just the punchline of the story. That, that there was a, when the first Lubavitcher Rebbe first became Rebbe. Uh, uh, he sent one of his Hasidim, his name was Chaim Gutnik, uh, 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 to to try to, uh, to, to 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 talk to a, a very big scholar who was not Hasidic, and to find out what he thought about the Rebbe and the Rebbe's movement, uh, the Rebbe's movement. 
And so the person, that great other person, said two things. He said, number one, that it bothers the not Hasidic world how the Rebbe eh, 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 doesn't, eh, eh, doesn't eh, eh, ask. He, he does these, these, these earth, world-shattering things. He's transforming the world. Thousands upon thousands of Chabad houses. Uh, 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 telling women to have, there was a whole period when the Rebbe was encouraging women to have more children and more children. Where, where, where the 12, the, the, the Rebbe's 12 Mitzvahim, the, the, these uh, campaigns to spread Judaism around the world, uh, uh, taking thousands of people and making their whole life uh, 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 just to, to help other Jewish people. There's so many things the Rebbe did. That, that the Rebbe did all these things without asking uh, for any anybody else's opinion, whether he's doing the right thing or not, that the Jewish way is to ask other people's opinions. And the second thing was that the Rebbe took one particular a, a line from the Medrash. The Medrash is part of the oral commentary. He took one line from the Medrash and he made it the main thing. Listen to me. He, that's what they complained about. The Rebbe took the, a simple line, a forgotten hit part of the Torah that nobody looks at. Nobody looks at it, and he made it the main thing. And what's and what's that one line? That one line is Rotsa Hakadosh Baruch Hu Vasaisley Dir That what did what was God Nisave Hakadosh Baruch Hu? What was God's desire in creating the world? That we, the human people, should make a place in this world for God to dwell. We should create a space where God feels welcome. And that, okay, right. And so what did the Rebbe answer? Those, those, two, those two indictments. One, that the Rebbe doesn't ask anybody's opinion. And two, he took something, a forgotten, unimportant line, and he made it into the whole main thing. Right? That each and every person has the ability to create a dwelling place for God. There are some people that say, no, that's wrong. We have to study Torah. Forget about everybody else. Some people say, no, we have to do mitzvahs. We have to completely push away everything and just do mitzvahs and just study Torah, okay? Right? And and uh, no. no, the Rebbe and the Rebbe said something different. He said we have to help everybody in the world to to make a dwelling place for God. So it means it's not just when you're in synagogue that you have to make a place for God. It's not when you're in the street and you're public. If you wear a yarmulke, or you're wearing tzitzis, or you're dressed in a, a woman dressed in a modest way. The idea that a person, I'm talking to myself, I, I should only hear myself what I'm saying. The idea that in Chedre Chadorim, that when a person is alone by themselves, right, that they also will act on the highest spiritual level is because they know that the, that the, that the main thing, right, is that God wanted us to create a dwelling place for him in this place where God is the most hidden. So it's not just Judaism, it's not just a public action. It's, it's, a, it's even in the, in the most intimate private places. I also have to. And so the Rebbe's answer, I hope that was clear. And the Rebbe's answer to that chassid that said that that's what was the indictment of the not Hasidic community to the Rebbe, the Rebbe said, well, that one question answers the other. If, if, if they didn't figure out that this generation, the most important thing is that one line that God desired, that, that, that God desired that each and every person should make a dwelling place for God in the world, whether in public or in private, if they didn't realize that, then who were they to ask advice from? <laughs> they didn't get the most simple thing. Okay, and that's the power of a story. That's the power of the story. When we read the story, we hear the stories about how people not didn't just talk the talk, they lived, they walked the walk, they lived it in the most in the most deepest recesses of their lives. Okay? That gives us the ability also that we should also not just talk about it, we should live it. Right? And, and that's what will bring that was makes that's what will fill God's desire and that will, will is what will bring the redemption. Okay, I'm finished. Thank you very much for listening to me. Okay, and uh, 
and it's more important for me than for any of you. I want to say, and I'm going to give everybody a blessing that they should be able to, if I hope, first of all, God help me that you should understand what I'm talking about. And if you have questions, you're going to ask me. Please, God. Okay. And the second thing is that we should all make the effort to make it right to fulfill that one indescript line buried in the medrash that the, the God's desire was for the human people to make him a dwelling place in the lowest world where God is the most human. And we should prepare, we should use our time this week to prepare for Shabbos and Sunday, which is Rosh Chodesh Elo, and Hashem should bring us uh, all the hemshachas, all the drawings down for a good and sweet year. Everybody, Bani Chaim Ezani, children, nachas from children, and the, and, the, and the parents, and the children should have nachas from their parents, and the parents from their children, and good health, and, and the Pabnosa are plenty, and uh, only good news. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop talking now. Any Amazing. questions? Any questions? Kaya, speak up. No. Dara, are you sleeping? Dara's coming to visit us in Israel. Karen, Dara, Sonny, Ron, I, I spoke so much, I made, it, I made everybody speechless. Dax. Um, yeah, Rabbi, I didn't understand that part in the, sto the earlier story. was So when the kid went for, to study with the Pope, the Pope was Jewish? I didn't understand Jewish. that part. Yeah, because there was um, after <clears throat> what was the expulsion from Spain in 1492? Yeah, the conversos. And the, That's right. And the, that 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 yeah. that Ferdinand and Isabella had required everybody to convert. Okay. Okay. And a yeah. lot of people converted, but they kept being Jewish undercover. Okay. Sure. And so, yeah. And so, yeah. and so, so they really. The, uh, 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 exiled all of the people that were still doing openly things Jewish because they didn't, the people that had, had had said they converted to Christianity, they wanted them to, to not to be influenced yeah. by the other Jewish people. Okay, okay. okay so he, was so he was Jewish. He was Jewish, that's right. Okay, Okay, and then and then how did that story with the king, um, the, the son from the, that was, you know, by the grace of the Jewish people, how did that connect with the other story with the kid that died after two years? Because when the child, when that, it started out that the, the that when the king made the decree that if unless he would have a child, he was going to exile all the Jews. Only yeah. one soul in heaven agreed, uh, okay. agreed to come down. But but because that soul was suckled by a, a not Jewish mother for two years, then even though he was given the highest place in heaven, there was something lacking in him. Okay. There was something. So something. Was, there was a spiritual. It was a, that soul. A tiny spiritual defect, right? And so, okay, okay. And so, to give him his proper reward, right? You know, you know what? But right? yeah, I think that's a, it's a very human thing, the way, right? You know that that uh, uh, in the end, God knows what's deepest in our hearts. Okay, God knows, right? So, if a person's not complete, he can't go to the highest places in heaven, and heaven yeah. wanted to give him his complete reward. So he had to be born again to the world, and he was born to a family. Who, which family would take such a child? Yeah. Who would take him? And only a family that it was decreed from heaven for other reasons that it's not discussed why that they shouldn't have children. Okay. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dax. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Ron, I, you're just shocked by the material I'm giving over. I I apologize. Okay, but we'll be in touch. Okay, that's it then. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. You're all my secret service. Go and share something from this class with, uh, with, uh, with somebody else, with a few other people. And that's what doubles and redoubles the impact of the class. I want to thank you for letting me learn this material and share with you because it's changing my life literally on a daily basis. Okay, Hashem should bless each and every one of you. should be a good week. Right, and proper preparations for the Rosh Chodesh Elul for the first days of the month of Elul. And we'll see whoever can to come next week, next, next, uh, uh, next Sunday. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thanks we very can, much. Bye. Bye. We can turn off the recording. Yeah. Thank you, Rabbi.